Suzuki Iruma is not human. Now, since chapter 303 almost revealed to Asmodeus that Iruma is actually human, I feel it's the perfect time to tell you guys that he's actually part demon. And there are so many instances that show this. Don't get me wrong, he's definitely partially human, his powers wouldn't make sense if that wasn't the case. You have his unique power to heal all demons and grow plants to a ridiculous degree with just his blood, which is not a power which demons possess. Now, where are the examples that he isn't completely human? For one, why was Iruma able to use a spell despite not yet possessing his ring? Oh, you don't remember that? In the second episode, we see him use a spell to stop himself from falling, a forbidden spell nonetheless. His innate ability to dodge everything may not just be from his childhood experiences, but his bloodline magic. That's right, Iruma actually does possess this type of unique magic. We saw recently in chapter 302 that Iruma was able to upgrade this skill through his near-death experience in the Heartbreaker arc to protect the princess that no other demon was able to predict. This fits in with how bloodline abilities are used in the series. The more you train, the stronger it becomes, especially in high-intensity situations. Situations. But that's not the only thing I've discovered. He's not only part demon, he was actually manufactured in a test tube. Baal was recently shown to own a test tube where he created demons that aren't supposed to exist. Baal wants the demon world to return to origins where they do not care about humans in the slightest. So using them for experiments? It's not outside the realm of possibilities. Obviously, it's cool to imagine that he's Delkiwa's baby or something, but that's extremely unlikely. Instead of just being half human, half demon, he's more like a human that's been implanted with demon-like abilities. Baal did this with Atari, as you can see the spider in this panel. Spiders do not exist in the demon world, they only exist in the overworld. Meaning that as a member of the 13 crowns who have permission to do anything they want, he could have easily popped up to the overworld whenever he wanted to, just like Sullivan did. He succeeded in the experiment, but Iruma was a failure, and and since coming to the demon world and receiving his ring, he no longer fit in with either race. Think of Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul. He was implanted with Ghoul's organs, becoming neither Ghoul nor human, and was constantly questioning who he really was. Iruma is similar, wanting to be a demon but seeing himself as human deep down, who can't live amongst his friends. He seemingly conquered this in the Harvest Festival, shooting through his fears, but when Kirio showed up recently, it brought back all of these anxieties. Now, just with Atari becoming the spider demon, Iruma could have been created in the same way. Yes, he does have human parents who resemble him, but Baal only recently mastered how to create these demons, so chances are that he used humans to attempt to manifest new abilities within them. Being in the demon world enabled Iruma to use the tiniest smidge of mana because of the mana circling around him, allowing him to use spells temporarily while he was adjusting to this new world. Iruma partially being a demon would explain his evil phase. He wasn't completely evil or crazy like Asmodeus and Sabro, but it awakened the demon DNA within him, but suppressed most of his human side. Hence why when he was in his evil phase, he still retained his core values, like not being able to refuse someone's request. The Iruma we usually see is primarily the human DNA in control, but when he uses his mana it becomes a lot more confident because this demonic DNA is being released a little by Aligrad. Anyway, back to Iruma's bloodline magic. Before receiving his ring, he wasn't able to use his innate skills for rebel magic. This is where Aligrad came into the picture. The ring instinctively sensed the power deep within him, choosing Iruma as his master to unlock his true abilities, as Aligrad is in fact Delk Kira. Well, he's at least a manifestation of Delkira, since he possesses his mana which he spread to Iruma. More evidence to prove that Iruma is partially a demon is that every time he releases his power to a huge extent, he grows wings. Obviously, Ali-san can mimic wings using his mana as he did when he had to trick Balam into thinking Iruma was human, but when he used Pandarula, it was before Ali-san had a consciousness. So due to having more demonic mana seeping throughout his body, his natural physiology also shines through. Now yeah, I can delve deep into the series and try and look at hints as to why Ali Cred and Del Kira are related, but there's a way more obvious sign. And that's the fact that Ali Cred is literally Der Kila backwards. And yes, I know I've been saying Del Kira, but it has been pronounced as Der Kila throughout the anime, just because of how the Japanese language works. So Ali Cred backwards is literally Del Kira. So if that doesn't tell you that they're related, I don't know what does. He was able to use the forbidden spell in episode two due to being in the demon world. This was a test from Sullivan to confirm his suspicions that a hybrid indeed existed. It also it wouldn't surprise me if his parents sold him to a demon for experimentation before when he was a baby, since they literally sold him off completely later. But when the experiment failed, 
he was sent back to his parents, so they felt like he had to earn all of the money they lost from that deal on his own. Delkira blessed Iruma in two different ways. First, Iruma was granted the ring, which is clearly the golden ring of Solomon, but became corrupted without Delkira for centuries, causing it to become the gluttonous feeder ring. Now, there are a lot of questions about Delkira. She was surmised to be a human since the Demon King is known to be able to heal all of demon kind, which Iruma is also able to do. If you look at this panel with Sullivan, it seems that Delkira is bleeding onto Sullivan, but my belief is that he's actually bleeding voluntarily to heal Sullivan, who was actually the one who was injured. I mean, look the way his hand is above him and the blood is dripping onto Sullivan. This caused Delkira to lose all of the mana in his ring because Sullivan was that badly injured, explaining Sullivan's guilt over Delkira's departure, and also why the ring went crazy when it was first unleashed because it hadn't been fed with mana in centuries. The ring of Solomon is worn by the Demon King, but for Alicra to actually revert back to his original form, she needs Iruma to rank up to the highest level. Then Iruma would have the requirements to become the Demon King. And if you want even more proof that Alicred is in fact a manifestation of Delkira's mana, she woke up from his slumber when he heard Poro's sound, and even in episode 5, he actually seemed calmed by Clara's music, maybe even remembering Poro. This is why Delkira appeared in the Harvest Festival as an apparition. Iruma was the young king and ranked up. He was getting closer to becoming the Demon King, so Alisan was leveling up in the process, causing more of his original mana to be unleashed, aka Dalkira's mana. Hence why Sullivan went to Earth and found Iruma to raise him to become the next Demon King, a fact which Opera realised. Obviously it was due to Iruma's personality and Sullivan believing that deep down he had the desire to change the demon world into something better, but his hybrid nature definitely played a major part in Sullivan's decision. Iruma's ring gains more intelligence and power as he ranks up. Ali Kreb will only become his true self after Iruma not only becomes the top rank Yod, but the Demon King himself, since he is a manifestation of Delkira's mana. So yeah, if you're wondering what Iruma is, this is it. And if you want more videos dissecting anime and just going into them in general, then please make sure to subscribe and like the video, because I am planning to upload at least once a week, as I mentioned before, maybe twice if I have the time, and I'd love recommendations of what anime to cover. Obviously, I'm loving Iruma right now, and I just uploaded my Rimuru video, which is on screen right now, but there are a lot more series that I want to cover, so yeah, let me know in the comments.